We have a couple that's down at number seven, but they've got an Arcan meeting to go to with the fire departments. And uh, if we could move them up to right after our status report and we'll put them first before any prop proclamation or whatever. Yeah, also, okay. Jamie, too. He's got okay. Be fine to move Jamie up right after they get through then. I know they got to they gotta travel, so if you'll mark that, Don. So 12 is, go over the amendment. 12 is what? The election building. It's just uh, election building. information on the election yeah. building. Okay. Clear up. Ramblers <clears throat> and the recycle station will be number 13 again. And then moving seven, seven up to basically five, we'll do it before any proclamations okay. and that board appointments and that kind of thing. Uh, okay, Is that all? Does anybody else have a? Uh, are you wanting to appoint Tony? Tony, yeah, okay. yeah. We've got on here to. Oh yeah. Okay. But it's it's not, I guess. Yeah. We usually have well, you know who it G. is, but yeah. Four G. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right, our approval of previous meeting minutes. Uh, uh, everybody should have received them. Everybody good with them? Yes. Any changes, questions? All right, they're going to consent agenda, Don. Uh, our status, personnel status report. Uh, it usually stays pretty much the same, and I can't even find it, so it must be the same. Anybody got any questions on that? No. We're six, have a, have 197 employees, and we are staffed with 191, so there's six. <clears throat> so everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. All right, put that on your consent agenda. And then before we go into board appointments and things, number four proclamations, we will start with some of these that we needed to move uh, in respect to their time and meetings that they have to go to. So we will let uh, the... Uh, Mr. Jerry Kaiser and Ansel Smith, they have something to bring for us, so y'all can come on up. We're wanting to do is uh, for y'all to uh, let us have some of the property there to build a public safety training center. Uh, on that property, and you can see the two red buildings is where we're thinking about building it. And uh, we have to have at least two acres, so we, you know, it'll pretty well take care of that area right there. That's kind of where Spencer's uh, trailer was before. Uh, you can't disturb anything above that. Uh, of course, the sheriff's department's <laughs> got over on the corner, they've got their firing range and stuff, but this will be a public safety training for everyone. Not just one, and it's also going to help us when we get it built. Will help us uh, tremendously on ice. So it's worth 35 points for every fire department, not just one. It's for every one of them, and that means a lot on your ratings. We got a kind of a dead area, and that's why we're wanting to do that. We've got a dead area on Back Valley Road that Rising Pond and us cover, but it's out of our five-mile range on both of us. So there's an area there that people's insurance. But we'd like to get y'all's permission to get this property and uh, so we can get started trying to figure out what, how we're going to get it built and how we're going to fund it. Uh, now, does Don, does anybody know how much acreage is in that? I mean, what's happened looking at the sheriff's office, the blue building up here, in between those two is the old landfill. Right, that's, that's where they have the skeet shooting for the kids over there and stuff on top of the hill. Yeah. And you is, can't, it can't be disturbed. Did 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 y'all find out, uh, Mr. Kaiser, if what a setback would be off of that? I mean, is there enough? Yeah, there's enough there to, for us. To, I don't know what. So I'm sure there have to be something between <coughs> where you can and where you can't. I guess. I don't know. <coughs> Billy went over and looked at it with us, and it's he's. I mean, it's like probably 20 feet, 25 feet off of it, so it's not. It's as long as we're not close. It's more than that. Is it? There's a big ditch on that that has to catch you right off from that. Oh, okay. It's park and all, and it's a certain way, and it's a good ways back. This is okay. where the original county shop, where they worked on all the equipment and the in the area back through there. From that park down, all the way back to nearly Daniels Row, and all the way down to Back Valley to the property y'all just sold as well. It's a non-disturbed area. Okay. 
And I understand there's a chance if this is done that, that there may be a vehicle station or fire. We have a vehicle operation. ready to be stationed there. We've got one that'll be put there when okay. we get when we get our building up. We won't have to be buying no equipment. Yeah. So. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody smile. Okay. <laughs> not we, tonight. We, we do have a we have a piece of equipment. You mean not there. tonight. Huh? Not tonight. <laughs> no, not tonight. No, we're not we won't have to buy one period. So Okay. Uh are you asking the, the county to deed the property over no, no. to you? No, or no. To allow someone such as you build or used or something? Yeah. yeah. The two acres, as long as the county don't subdivide any of that and they leave it all county property, even though the sheriff's office and we put more stuff on there, yeah. that whole six acres will still count as long as we don't, the county don't try to sell any of it. All right. So, our, so would it be in the form of a lease then, or? Well, we want this a county training facility. We don't want nothing given to us. It's county so, equipment, county so, stuff. So it'd still be. It's a busy county. Yeah. 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 yeah, we don't want. We don't want to. You know, we want the county to keep the property. We don't. Want, it'd be basically the same agreement we made with the sheriff's department for their right. for their shooting range or simulator. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's 62.93 yeah. acres over there on that property. Usable acres. Oh. Okay, that's everything. That's everything. Yeah. Yeah, Billy. Billy went over and looked at it. And he's gonna, as soon as y'all say yes or whatever, he's gonna dig a couple of uh, places and make sure everything's good. Yeah. And so we'll who's responsible for the building? The county or? We ain't got to that. Yet. Okay. <laughs> no, we're just we're, we're looking at doing the, the we're looking at doing this public safety center, and we're in the process of talking to different people. For the building, but we didn't want to get too involved if we didn't have a place to land it. Right. So right. that that'll come later on in another month or two, if we're once we find a building and stuff. But well, we're just trying to find land to put it on right now. Yeah, I, I under yeah I understand that. It's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to say okay, but then it's the buildings like we don't know. What do you mean? What do you need? How much is going to be? That's what we're working on. We're working I mean, on that. We can't tell them. We're going. We're going to go look at two or three different ones, and then we can come back. <clears throat> Once we know we have the property, we want to. We don't want the, the people didn't really want to tell us anything until we sure we had a place to put it. Sure, I understand that. Yeah. And since since we're not deeding the property, there's nothing lost if. I mean, no, I mean, no. if, if, if the whole thing. I mean, we use flush or whatever. Property. You know, yeah. whatever sure. ones we can. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think you had something, Philip. Basically, you're just asking to be able to use the property for preliminary to see about what it's going to cost to put a building on. You're not telling us what the building's going to cost or anything at this point. No, because we don't know. We're yeah, we don't have any idea. We're going okay. to use our Trenton's Floss funds in the next, between 20, now to 27. This is one of the projects we want to do, and we're going to do it for everybody. A lot of the apartments are looking for trucks. A lot of the other tankers that y'all been, they've been talking to y'all about or something like that. We don't feel we need equipment. We want to build a facility. We're going to also approach the city council to do the same thing to help build that. That's what we're going to work on in our next six years of splash funds between city and county to build a training facility. It's huge points in our eyes. So a lot of us are hanging on to our numbers by just threads, and the training facility is 35 solid hard points that we can give. We've been working with our ISO consultants, some other fire chiefs. This is where they help us that we need something. It's not just for us, it's for all county departments on county property, county splash sure. runs. Can also be used by the sheriff's department for their. You know, y'all asked Tommy about multi use. This could be used for them to breach in houses. These buildings we're looking at, it's got movable walls. We will not burn heavy smoke in it. We've got the container <coughs> we've done to do that now, but we want to move over there. But you got to have so much area and space. We have it at the sewer plant now, it don't qualify. And it's not tall enough because of two story facilities. You got to have so many full two stories, two containers high that we have don't qualify for that. Sure. And it has to be yeah. NFPA approved for safety, things like that. That's where we're all seven of us are losing tremendous points that we want to take, since the property's already there, and use stuff to help better the ISO. And then, as Jerry was talking about the gap, we've been studying five road miles from every fire department. Valley View Drive to Valley View Estates, all the way down to Birch Chapel, Birch Chapel Road, Lane Drive, Fish, and all that are ISO Class 10. Yeah. Because ISO 
South Dade and Dade and Trenton has a huge hole. If we put, we want to move one of our trucks in the Trenton's district to that station, and we'll be able to finish that ISO out between our two gaps. We're working with Chief Hill on this, and it don't change any response area. It just helps people have a better insurance rate once yeah. we get this done. And that's the ISO to come back. Yeah, we're a class four in the city, uh, well, in our area. Well, our yeah. county yeah. city district is a class four. Yeah. And with our water hall and our automatic <laughs> gate, we can't, anybody that's outside of that five road miles as you drive 36 Back Valley Road, that's when it stops. That's what we're trying to do. And it makes a huge difference when you go from a 10 to a 4. It sure does, yeah. On percentage of what they say on insurance. So between both districts, we're going to have a combined station that hopefully both volunteers will help with. And we'll be able to respond to trucks out of there. And I so looks at us another. And we've got these all over the county. That was the three roads that hit us. Was Back Valley, Valley View, and somewhere in parts of 11 was further away because that station by five roads. When we got our studies back, it, we got back from it from ISO here this year. Where do y'all have to go now? I know we talked to her, you know, a while back. Where do y'all go tramp for training? Because you don't have a facility. Well, we do. We have our barn barn boxes down here that we use. When we can, we can. We've got certified instructors to barn. You got to have certified instructors to use these facilities. As far as safety goes, uh, we we use our barn boxes right now, and we're in the process of redoing one of them right now and rebuilding <coughs> it. Uh, so we're because we don't we, we have to travel if we don't. We have to either go to Walker County or somewhere else to do a barn. So we'll have our barn box back up in another well, month. Our certified barn facility, we have to go to Walker or Catoosa, right? Yeah. Now. Ours is not certified, like we we're saying, but we can do the simulations to go get the guys certified. We have to go to a testing facility that's got certified building, which is Walker and Catoosa. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but our instructors and training is all done here. How many do we have now? Four or five? Four live barn instructors and teachers that can do certain yeah. things. But that's with multiple departments. I mean, all of us. Sounds good. I'm good with the process to get to the price. Well, like I said, and I understand what Ants was saying. Until they know they got a place to put it, it wouldn't do them any good. To, because depending on what they're going to have to do, you know, to to hook up somewhere. Uh, do y'all know? Are you in the process now? If we agreed to this tonight, that you would go looking for yes, getting that pretty soon. In fact, we got a trip planned Friday to go look at three, two or three different buildings. That they call them fire chiefs, lieutenants. They're all different you know, type buildings. Calhoun? Calhoun's Calhoun. got two of them. Cleveland's got one. We've been, yeah, we've been, yeah, we're ready to go look. But, but the critical thing is the fire station. We want to get that 10 gone. That's the most important. And that's right. our cutoff point being Valley View Drive and there's county property. We can put a building. We want to put like a three bay building, maybe have two bays in it. The other side would be for restrooms and an area for training that you would do in-house there and then go out back like your map says in the two and a half, three story building be back there with some concrete area. We're gonna need pretty heavy water. Uh, there's a water line on that side of the road that we can tap and bring up through there and things like that. So most critical is the ISO. The yeah. training will help that when we get it, but we could ask them to come back before our two or three years and re-rate that area for the taxpayers. That's the, that's the number one concern right now. Yeah, we need to the get training will there. come in and either secure our four it will help every other district to have an in-house training NFPA certification and we might could ask to get everybody's rating down yeah. within the five mile radius. But we still got gaps like this all over the county that it's, it's a common problem nationwide, but crooks and crannies and things like that. But to, we're going to be asking for splash for a building kit of some sort that we try to do ourselves, working with our public works to do it and our in-house septic tank inspectors and, and constructors and <laughs> yeah, okay. so that help us out things like like we build our storm shelter we won't try to do as much in-house to save the funds yeah. but sure. that's what our goal is yeah, to get some type of that's what we want to do and even on the building i mean you know even the people we've talked to says look you know you can do the construct you know do the building yourself save you they charge you about as much as they do for the building to put it in. yeah and we've got a lot of people that can help put it up so and if there's a Big development comes in in that area like we like to do that. 
they may be willing to build the fire station to help that complex, I guess you can call it. Maybe. But that's, we just want to know whether y'all are say yay or nay on the property. That's the main thing. Then we'll go from there. So basically what y'all are asking for in this code of robbing is you're asking for two, two minimum of two acres starting there at Daniels Road with a front on Back Valley Road. And coming up to where that drain line is uh, or the... Uh, Back to the, the yeah. ditch that, right. that he was talking about. I mean, we'll have to stay off of it. I don't know. But we're not we're not giving up anything. We're just no. setting that aside for y'all to have the leverage to go after a building. And if something happens, it does not happen. Or to be in all honesty, I know uh, the mayor's mentioned using the city supply fund and all that. If you come back and we say, well, we can't we can't do it, then we couldn't do it. So you'd be in the midst of building. And I know, uh, like Lamar was saying, you, you can't really wait on a big development to come in if it's something that you no. need to do need to get done. So. It's going to help those citizens over there. It, it will. We're you got, try to do well, it you got two subdivisions, the golf course. Uh, well, half the valley views of 10, other halves of four. That's, that's, it splits right down through the line through there. you got all that other residents on Birch Chapel Drive, Birch Chapel Drain, Fisher Road, all that that we have pulled the five-mile radius yeah. working with Chief Hill. And we want to just, we need, those people need it now. And when we've got fire hydrants in Valley View, but you, there's still a 10. We call it even over five, we're, we're like 6.23 miles to get to. But they're in no man's land, basically. Okay. So when you leave that five mile road radius, you go to an automatic 10. That's just the way it is. And uh, we're, we were working with uh, Matt on a um, thing for somebody on Fisher Road. There's a hydrant in their front yard, but we're both six point something miles away. It just won't work. But, you know, it's just. Utilizing the county property, put a fire station on, and hopefully a thing on it. We don't yeah, I mean the county will still on it. Out. I mean it's not. We don't want. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say we're not. Okay. We're not giving up anything to. Yeah. To give the leverage to be able to go and. Yeah, I don't think we need to make the deal. You need to make property that's there. Yeah, help yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty level up there where the shop and all that was. It's fairly level. It's, it's a good long level spot, long enough away from that spot, and we, we walked the whole thing with Billy a couple times when as well as when the sheriff's office was doing theirs. But we hope to utilize the whole property for different things. Driving the trucks, the flat area up top where all the skeet shooting is and the big gravel lot. We Sometimes we need people need to learn how to drive them back up. We can set up cones in places. We've gone to the high school and the uh, senior building, but sometimes they got something going on. And some of these driveways we have to get up to. we got some narrow roads we can test with. But, you know, We hope to make it a training complex between us all. Yeah. All right. Mr. Hartline, what do you think? I know you already said, you know. I'm good. Good to see a price. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, what we, what the commission may want to do is consider uh, the, whether to, to agree with the, the <coughs> project in principle and then have them bring back the final proposal. Yeah. We'll find and I think that's all they're really wanting. They're just wanting to know that the land, the land would be there. Land's available, yeah. then we'll go from there. Yeah. Mr. Lowry? I'm good with it. Ms. Bradford? Yes, I'm, I'm good with that. And, and I am as well, so Robin can draw up whatever needs to be drawn up to. Okay. So y'all can start. Yeah, we'll, we'll the, get started and get back with y'all as soon as we get some prices and figure out which way we're going. Before y'all leave, Kerry told me that right before the meeting, this is, what was it, International Firefighters? Firefighters, today. yes, today. Right there, yeah. So yeah. we appreciate our firefighters. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to a class. <laughs> All right, and we moved Mr. Jamie Blevins up, so if you want to come on, Jamie. I appreciate you guys uh, moving me up a little tonight. <laughs> uh, so we've had a pretty busy month over there. We started framing. Um, they've got uh, four rooms or so done on the first floor uh, with the framing, which is, which is good. we got a couple of guys over there working steady, so that's um, moving in the right direction. We did have one RFP um, res issued and returned last month for uh, some selective demo uh, to allow us to complete the framing. And then there's some additional demolition work that needed to be done. We had two contractors show up for the mandatory pre-bid walkthrough. Only one uh, returned a, a proposal. That was River City Interiors um, for an amount of 25880 um, Given that they're already doing the framing, we recommend that we accept their proposal to do the demolition as well. 
<laughs> and the budget reflects that bid amount uh, that's included in your uh, monthly report from us. So that top line item there that's highlighted in orange uh, reflects their proposal amount and we were able to um, keep the budget I mean, intact. We didn't have to get into any contingency funds or anything for that demolition. So um, it worked out well there. We um, last month had a meeting with the HVAC contractor to talk about how we're going to get the diffusers put into the um, courtroom upstairs. Uh, the plan is to do a mock-up. We're waiting on a piece called a plaster ring. So um, the diffusers will look kind of like these, uh, but to put those in a hard seal and they make a trim kit that you have to get with those, and that's why we're waiting to come in to get that mock-up done to see how that's going to look with the tiles. So hopefully we'll have that and can um, recommend a direction for that next month. But um, right now we're thinking that's probably going to be the best way to go uh, to make sure we get a good finished look. Um, we don't want to have something that's kind of piecemealed up there. Uh, along those same lines, uh, we did locate a company that can create some more of those tiles for us. So um, we recommend getting about 20 tiles. That's a few more than we need. Um, to get everything put back together, uh, but that would give you some attic stock in case something ever happened. The cost for that, uh, including the mold, is right at $3,100, uh, and these will be a, a tin-plated steel panel, um, which is a little more expensive. They have a PVC option, but uh, my concern um, with, with going with something like a PVC is it's not going to have a, as clean and crisp of an edge as the steel wheel, and I'm afraid it won't match what's there. So. Um, for the relatively low cost that we're looking at, I would recommend going with the, the little higher end product to make sure we get the, the profiles to match what we've got. Um, so we would recommend going ahead and getting that done, getting that mold made, and moving forward with getting those tiles uh, as well. Uh, coming up this month, we have two RFPs out uh, right now. One for millwork. There's a mandatory pre-bid for that on May the 10th at 8 a.m. So this will be the largest piece of finished work that we have in the, in the courthouse that we'll be um, uh, trying to get under contract this month, um, or proposals back to present to you for, for contract next month. Um, so that's a mandatory pre at eight uh, on the 10th, and then we have the painting and staining work, um, which will be um, at two o'clock on the 10th for the mandatory pre-bid. Both of those uh, proposals are due back at noon on the 24th of May. Uh, so we'll be able to present both of those packages to you at the June meeting. Um, getting those set up uh, to move forward will allow us to get the bulk of the finished work done uh, by early fall, uh, rolling right into getting the um, flooring done uh, towards the end of the year and, and getting the project wrapped up by year end. That, that's our current schedule and plan. Um, we are working with a door and hardware vendor right now. So in, in kind of putting together the RFP for the doors and hardware, there's a lot of doors over there that are really nice. They're old um, and we hate to just trash them. So we're working with a hardware vendor right now to try to find hardware that will work with the existing doors we have but also have some hardware manufactured to match that that we can use on new doors so we don't have to spend the money on getting mortise doors, which are way, way more expensive. So uh, we hope to have that information the next week or two so we can get that RFP out and get that stuff ordered as well because those will have a little bit of lead time with them that we'll need to get those um, headed this way. Uh, other than that, um, we're still plugging along. The plan will be to get going with the um, already approved uh, drain line, um, which where that uh, wall was damaged uh, from the accident, that will be our access point now, which will make things a little easier. And um, <laughs> you'll just roll that repair work in when we've got to repair the wall uh, where we tied to that drain. So, all right, any questions? Uh, sound like a great report. Yeah. yeah, you probably, you might have answered this a second ago, but I didn't. If you were going at the same pace you are now, mm -hmm. and the money, everything was done, when do you think that will be a finished? So right now the plan is to have this thing done by end of year. By the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. 
I thought yeah, that's, that's what, what we're tracking right now. As long as we don't hit any hiccups with material, right. anything. Yeah. So everything's looking it's a little bit ahead of schedule. A little bit ahead of schedule. Yeah, we're we're tracking well. Good. Well, it's been a long wait. I'm sure we can make seven more months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more questions for Jamie? Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. All right, we'll go back to our board appointments and proclamations. Uh, first is a joint proclamation for uh, the respective law week. And of course, this was done on Tuesday. I think we'll be showing some, some pictures uh, during, during our regular meeting of some, some that went on over there. Uh, this is something that the Optimist Club does every year uh, at the 1st of May in honoring uh, a lot of the, uh, well, six different uh, factors in as far as the Highway Patrol, City Police, Sheriff's Department, DNR, and all those. So it's a great thing, and if, you, if you're able to next year and on that first Tuesday in May to come to it, it's really a great thing to do. So everybody good with that. It's something we've been doing. I think this was the 18th year that that uh, Optimus Club has been doing it. Everybody good with it? Yes. Okay. Don't sit consented. Uh, today was a proclamation for the National Day of Prayer. Uh, I don't think as far as anything we did, we did have prayer, but it was uh, for another function that we'll talk about in a second. But uh, this was National Day of Prayer. Uh, and I'm sure that a lot of prayer went up for our nation and our our citizens. So, so that's May May the fourth, 2023. Is everybody good with that? Yes. Okay. Put that on the consent agenda. <clears throat> uh, the Foster Proclamation for Foster Care Month uh, is something that's always needed. People to take uh, children sometimes for a little while, sometimes for extended. But again, something we've been doing in uh, honoring them for uh, a lot of years so uh, everybody good with that it's may of 2023 uh proclamation for armed forces day on the third saturday of may uh, which is coming up real soon and again something that we certainly uh, honor our serving military and armed forces people as well as those who uh, have the veterans that are involved in it. So everybody good with that? Consent agenda. Uh, proclamation for National Travel and Tourism Week. And uh, somebody may want to say more about that later on, but uh, uh, that's for the May 2023. And uh, we hope to continue to build our tourism uh, in, here in Dade County, Trenton. Everybody good with that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Consent agenda. Uh, have a appointment of a member to the Georgia Region One Emergency Medical Council. Uh, that one I'm not. Haven't been out of the country for three three weeks since the last month. So. I'm, I'm, so. Yeah. We have uh, two members. That is a myself and uh, been on it ever since we've had our 08 service of emergency services and. We're, we're going to appoint Kyle Gross, which is now the EMS chief of our county emergency or EMS services to serve that term that's, I think, goes to 24 or 26. And uh, so we're just, two of us are there and they do uh, quarterly meetings and things that we have to be there to keep our status of our zone and a license that we do and any updates <coughs> and changes that's happening. There you go. Everybody good with that? All right, put that on the consent agenda. Uh, then resolution R21-23, uh, excuse me, uh, resolution appointment of a member, the Dade County Water and Sewer Authority Board to fill the unexpired term of a member's term. The member is Daryl Pardue, who uh, runs and operates the uh, hardware uh, store in Rising Fond. He served now about a little over three years uh, on the water board, but he did uh, tender a resignation, which uh, we have before us. Uh, we were looking, looking and asking and talking to people, and we did have someone that has agreed to serve, uh, and that someone is Tony Payne, who lives in uh, Rising Fund as well, and uh, that's District 3. We try to do it by district, if at all possible. So uh, 
Mr. Tony Payne has agreed to serve. This is the unexpired term, which ends the end of this year. So it's basically seven, seven and a half months. But of course, he would be eligible, if so desiring to, he would be eligible to be re, uh, uh, renamed. So is everybody good with Mr. Tony? OK, then we'll put that on the consent agenda. And Don will take care of that, getting it to the proper folks tomorrow. Uh, all right, that is all of our resolution and appointment. Everybody's good. That's all on the consent agenda. Now we'll go to the approval of splash capital equipment number five, if any. Uh, we have Captain Joe Chambers here to talk to us about something tonight. So, Mr. Chambers, come on up. So uh, I'm going to start talking to you about flush valves. We've got 28 flush valves in the jail that affect inmates. That's not counting the public area or the officers at the officers' restrooms. But um, so valid. probably um, I'd say six, seven years ago, we started uh, as they would go down, uh, we was replacing them with Zern uh, flush valve. They Zern uh, offers a flush valve. We were play we were paying a little bit over 600 back then. Yes, sir. You're you're done in the ARPA request instead of spots request. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know y'all wanted to go there first. My apologies. So, um, when we're on spots, the body cameras. Um, when we first got those for the jail, uh, we worked uh, the city give us an excellent deal, um, and we purchased. Uh, eight, actually, I believe it was nine body cameras like that one there. Um, I'm thinking we paid less than 500, and it was by, it was bought from a uh, from the inmate benefit fund. So originally it wasn't tax dollars. Uh, the charging station and the downloading station uh, to charge and download the videos uh, went bad, and then um, due to uh, WatchGuard, uh, Motorola purchasing WatchGuard, uh, they, they're not going to fix our charging and download station. So um, we unfortunately have to, or forced into stepping it up, and I'll let Alex talk to you about that. As, as we approached with the patrol units and the servers a few months ago, again, these current ones that we donated some to the sheriff's office, and Joseph bought a few more for his jailers. And, you know, we talked about Law Appreciation Week, and those detention officers are in there 24-7, just like our officers in the field. And there's incidents that happen in that jail. I've been in there a few times working, and I'm glad I was at where I was at when those incidents happened. So, again, they're unseen first responders and, and keeping of our things. And these things have saved so many things that go on, the same thing with our officers. But this is the new replacement that WatchGuard has developed with Motorola as they bought out. And this is the one we purchased with the car that Major Bradford had come up that we're getting outfitted for patrol. We just put three of these uh, available also in the city units, but we can't get them cut over. The server cut over is June 1. We're still waiting on technology to get caught up and people to do all this for us. But these right here is what you see, the quote of 10. Uh, on your paperwork there, uh, also with the cradle that Joseph was talking about, because his guys have to be able to, uh, in their checkout room and uh, uh, what we call the, uh, where they're doing all their work, they take these things in and out, and every one of those jailers and officers have these mounted on their chest when they're out there doing their job. Um, so for what he's trying to do, we are, these are breaking quicker than we can get them repaired, and they're not able to repair them. The end of life of these are now and we can't get them repaired. The officers are having to come get some of the jail's old ones to work out in the field, and we're getting a quote for what we need to finish out patrol, because we can't buy, we can't replace cars with this new system quicker than these are tearing up. Uh, this is one is destroyed that they've sent back because they can't fix it. So I just brought it to show you the difference of it, and most of this one is a battery, and this is the actual camera. As you can see, the technology is smaller and newer. And this has also got a panoramic view that looks right to left and up and down. And this old one, you had to move it up and down manually. So it's probably 10 years difference in data. We started replacing these with the cars as we as they would come to y'all with car replacements. We were getting new, new one of these things. 
And with the hot swappable battery, this battery is internal that we had to send back to get replaced. Then later on, they started giving us the tools and the specs to do it ourselves because they wouldn't last long. And sometimes in a busy shift, Joseph's detention officers were uh, run out of battery. They were having to swap them back out and get back on because it's such a busy day and every interaction that he has with his officers, which crimes happen in our jail. We can't help that. And that's also the evidence that needs to go with that into the DA's office. So the request there is for the 10 cameras, the cradle, and the uh, warranty and services uh, for each uh, unit uh, that we have 24 replacement stuff on it there. And I believe it was at 13, 895. Okay, 895. Yeah. And the servers and stuff that we got, all this ties into it. That's it's exactly the same thing that for the broke patrol. It's just the division of the jail. You expect those, you said the others tear up faster and you can get them fixed. You expect those to be a better? They are. It's the newest thing out there. We didn't want to, we didn't have to rebuy licensing or anything. We just had to update servers because what I'm going to present earlier, uh, server 2012 is getting obsolete from Microsoft. We're under this gun every splos when certain servers start going down that won't be, op that won't be supported by Microsoft <coughs> to move to the newest version of WatchGuard Motorola software. And also, this technology that I can't get parts for, this is the new one they developed that they can build with better technology. And we need 20 in patrol. Uh, me and Tommy and Matt talked today and Joseph this afternoon that we, we, it's our safety of our folks out there to what they do. And in a road patrol unit, as soon as they initiate their lights and siren when they're responding, their car camera comes on which does a panoramic view, their body camera comes on automatically. Uh, the, 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 when the suspects are in the back of the car, it records them. It looks at them as they're sitting because crimes have happened in the back of that or contraband has been dropped and uh, it records everything they say back there. So that's the safety that we need that goes on for these cases to keep in our city and county safe. And we need 20 to start replacing them because we if to get 20 cars replaced with the units we currently have, it takes us 10 years to do it if we're doing two cars a year. So we're waiting on a quote to see. Uh, we will not need the cradle station on that, but as you see, the individual cost of uh, $9.95 for just the camera and then the yearly maintenance. Now that yearly maintenance is what we've been budgeting in uh, this will cover the first year. In the years after that, we do have a maintenance contract with WatchGuard Motorola that maintains our servers and uh, equipment. If this breaks, they send us a brand new one and we send this one back. But All right, anybody have a question? Mm -hmm. Who did you say the M10 was for? Sir? The 10 that we're getting, who are they going to? They'll be in his jail division. And you said we need 20 more for the next. Yeah, that's that's just patrol. We haven't proposed that, but we're did we waiting. ask? Yeah, I mean, I know that, but did we ask if we go back to that number? Would they, you think there may be a discount? We can see. We could ask them and see. <clears throat> I'm actually meeting with her the 12th or Motorola Well. Were the 10 or the 20 or both? I mean, I. Either. Well, that would be a. Hmm. We got them all at that price: the ten for the jail and the twenty for patrol. A lot of times, the investigators share them when they go out and do their things. They need them. They don't have cameras in their cars, so with all the patrol units and the cars, it's ready to go in investigations. And we also like to have at least one or two spares sitting there in case something goes wrong. You hand them one and keep going. If not, somebody's got to leave one, or they forget, and then we got an officer that don't have a body cam. Benefit of ordering them, I mean, there is probably a benefit of ordering 30. I mean, you might get a discount. The problem is when they do start going out, all 30 goes out one tend time. to start going out about the same time. Doesn't mean they'll all go out. I mean, accidents happen too. Yeah. But I mean, if we do, as we buy cars and update them in time, the thing is, we we're right. These are going to be these are going to all be dead before we can replace yeah, the cars. Yeah. I mean, 
we start talking about we start staggering and now they're only going to get more expensive too they are. you got to think about that like you said joseph we started these were 549 dollars they kept I think they got up to like seven or eight at the last and now they are 995. so so what is what is the best immediate need for them? the whole 20 30 the 10 I and mean, then be able to stagger them yeah, for a while three, four. so um <clears throat> typically on day shift there is uh going to be four officers in there that will need access to cameras and then of course they go home and then three officers on night shift but, so that's seven yeah. for a 24 hour shift because you just can't take a day shift camera hand it to a night shift guy they got a dock and then the new camera goes on the night shift well i mean don don brought up a good point if it's something that you could do over a six month you know come back in six months and and do and and because everything we do seems to do what he said we buy 30 they all go out at one time if you can wait six months and get 10 more and six months and get 10 more something you know some kind of a staggering then they wouldn't all come up at one time and say, well, we need them all again because the price will go up. But We understand. I mean, we can if we were to get 10 now, that would get the jail back 100%. Right. We can take what good ones he's got and use them until the other ones. But, yes, but one of the things that all the ones in the jail don't automatically turn on with the car because they don't have the Wi-Fi capability. That's when we donated the cities to them when we upgraded five or six years ago. We, we give these to the city to the county because we got the ones with Wi-Fi that automatically comes on with the cars. So the guys are having to turn the car on and when they get out of the car they got to hurry up and turn the button on and sometimes they don't have time. So that's the only downfall with that. Um, so it is. Yeah, it's technology. It is. Technology is yeah. nice. When they turn everything <laughs> on everything's 100% going. But we got four sitting over on the desk waiting for replacement cameras so we can send the other ones back. And we've been, it's been on Daniel's desk for at least four months. And does, does that cost something also? No, with our warranty, it doesn't. Okay. So they send us the, they don't have the stuff to send us because they can't repair them. Yeah. It's just yeah. a supply chain and old technology where parts are. It's what they're telling us. Now they're built in Texas. They're American made. I don't know where the parts are coming. This is also built in Texas by the same company. Motorola just put their symbol on it. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> And one of the things, the new software is Linux-based, which is good for viruses now. We've got a lot of more um, agencies and software is moving to Linux because of the cyber issues our nation and world is having right now. So uh, big change for us, but all of our old equipment will convert to the new, like our car cameras, the other existing body cameras that's still working. You know, if we get down to a point we don't have any, that might be when we order five at a time or something. Sure. kind of way we do our radios too you know we'll come to you so often with what grant funds and some splash funds and buy five or six radios at a time so, so what we're re really what we need to do tonight i think is to go ahead and look at this 10 yes. agree to the 10 yeah. and then you know get up yeah. see how it would be later a little later on down the that's road. why when we got this for joseph last month middle of last month and just come in after we done met and then we've had a few more issues since then just got me thinking and we were holding on these cameras and and our guys and gals that's out in the field that we're we're gonna keep running into this issue i think but this will give us a little bit more yeah. cushion well and this Bye. this will honor this particular quote that we've got from, yes. from this place too so yeah all right well what do you think mr hartline i'm good with it all right okay i am as well put that on consent again mr mr don uh, well, we got Alex to come up, or we got Joe. Joe you thought if, if it's all right, if we can do this now, he come on back up now with your flush valve. This is ARPA money now. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're looking at 28 inmate-related flush valves, and um, of course the building uh, is as old as the original flush valves were going out. We had to make a determination on which one to use, um, and uh, we we elected to go with the Zern flush valve. Um, but they have what they just keep, in my opinion, inching up in price. Um, 
back we were paying a little over 600 when we first started replacing uh, with the with the zone um, and uh, I think I see in February we were paying 757 February of 22757 dollars per valve uh, and I tried to get an updated quote from Walter A. Wood they didn't send it um, uh, but Jared said that the vows are, are closer to eight hundred dollars a piece now. So um, their lifespan, in my opinion, wasn't good enough, especially for that kind of money. Typically, Zern does put out a good product, and uh, we were going with that particular uh, flush valve to prevent um, the inmates from uh, from time to time. We've had issue with them trying to flood the jail out. If you can cram a a towel or sheet or whatever in the toilet and just keep mashing flush you just you get the waterfowl effect out in the jail so uh th that particular valve only allowed them to flush three times in one hour so you better make it count uh, <laughs> that was all you're getting but anyway um along with the 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 price of zern we we got to looking um four years ago we tried out a uh, a new company, Icon. They're out of Atlanta, and uh, <clears throat> we were having similar problems with our with our shower valves. They just weren't lasting. We was getting one year uh, out of a shower valve and having to replace each shower valve every year. Uh, we switched to Icon on the shower valves four years ago, and um, it, they've been great. Uh, we've had three minor hiccups. Uh, with eight showers, so well, actually nine showers, so we can't really complain on that. I contacted the Icon for a quote. Um, for the material, it's 15655 Um They also quoted um, labor to come up and in install uh, for $8,498. Um, which with Jared uh, being as busy as he is, um, taking on a project of doing 28 flush valves along with everything else that's going on in the county, um, you know, it's, it, he, it's just not something that he can put the brakes on and come into the jail and start replacing flush valves because it's, it's not going to be, uh, it's, it's going to take some time to get all 28 of those in. Um, so the difference between if you uh, the Zern and the Icon valve is it's going to be a little over $5,500 savings, and um, you know we're kind of Icon they they do everything that the Zern does as far as limited on the flushes, so we don't wind up with a flooding effect when somebody's unhappy, um, and uh, also uh, when I talked to Icon I said you know if if it goes bad or some trash comes out of the city water main and gets up into the valve and tears it up. I said, how much is the guts of it? He said that you can pop pop the lid, $20, drop a brand new uh, cartridge in, just similar to you, like you would at your home kitchen faucet, and uh, you're ready to go again. So uh, in addition to that, also, um, Zern, we've been waiting on average um, about you know, month and a half to two months on parts or another valve. So as it stands right now, we've got six toilets down. And those six toilets are four beds or four inmates. Um, so that's that's uh, beds that we can't use until we get them up. And right now, we you won't find that valve in Chattanooga. Um, and we're trying to get parts in on the warranty because they're not that old or not lasting that long. So uh, I'd just like to present maybe trying a more economical valve and and um, at $20 a replacement as far as in the future, that's going to go a lot better for us and they're readily available. So you're asking for basically two items and it comes to a total of around 24000 is that correct? Yes, sir. 15655 and then the installment or whatever 8000 yes 498 mm -hmm. all right any questions did you check with any local plumbers to see if they could install the flush valves 
had a better rate? Yeah, I'd be glad to. I mean, I, if y'all want to hold up on that portion, we can. Um, and I mean, you've got six bad right now? I've got six bad right now, today, and it changes just about every week and a half, two weeks, one will go down. Or... And uh, taking on a new valve, I personally, a complete swap like that, we don't know anything about these yet. Why wouldn't we do this 10? Have four on, <coughs> we got so, four on hand. So with, with Icon, with the shower valves, uh, you know, again, we were, we, what we moved away from and went to Icon on the shower valves, like I said, our shower valves have been in for four years. I think Jared's had to have minor uh, glitches three times in four years. So, you know, kind of banking on on that kind of service with them with these flush valves uh, because, I mean, even if you had the cartridge being $20, if you had to drop, you know, a few cartridges in a year, you're still not you're not having to replace the whole valve like with Zern. We're having to pull the whole valve out. You can't, they won't let you get into it to pull the old cartridge out, put a new cartridge in. Um, and Icon is a, uh, they're a corrections slash jail provider. I read about them online. I didn't see anything yeah. about a local. That I, all I could find was in Florida. Mm -hmm. You said during Atlanta. So. They, uh, I was looking over, um, I was looking over the sign, sign here page. If you want to buy this, and I noticed an Atlanta address. So, and they may be that. It said Florida. Okay. Um, but you know they've got it available, and we'll have replacement parts available in the future, and that's better than what Zern is offering because. If it goes out and that valve is past one year, then then you're looking at almost eight hundred dollars. Versus. I to look at ten of them, but that was my. Lamar. I was like Lamar. Was, how long has the six been down? Um, about a month. I'd prefer about to about a, a month, ten, month and a half. Have let Jared do the six and have four on hand to check them out first. So can can I ask you this? Can we go ahead and go 12? The reason why I ask is these uh, they don't have movable parts, and one uh, electric controller controls four toilets. So you that. got I, in in a chase. I have four toilets. I'm gonna drop one controller and catch all four toilets. Yeah, I'm good I mean, I don't say. care a bit. To is there any like is there a warranty towards any <clears throat> two year? Two years. Mm -hmm. So, so then if you're, you get the 12, and then the others that are not that brand go down. You're spending $800 more per valve. Per valve mm -hmm. to get them. Icon per valve price is 194.46 versus pushing $800. Yeah. And well, it what, does. And what would be the total for? You want 20? Well, the the total for the whole jail is 28. Uh, how many, is how many flush valves we have? 28. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if it worked out with 12, it goes back to what we talked about earlier too. You don't have all 28 at one time. Sure. Somewhere yeah. down the road. <laughs> and I and I'll be honest with you, their their shower valves. I didn't expect their shower valves to do as well as they've done. Um, because man, I've We've had a lot of prayer meeting over some shower valves in that jail before we went with them. You know, and you may, you know, with that warranty, uh, I, I agree with, with Philip. You know, you see if there's anybody locally that could do it, but you wouldn't want it to affect the warranty if it was not their well, condition. If, <clears throat> if you don't have a six out right now and Jerry can replace them. I'm not talking about a 28. Change yeah. Them. We're talking about six. So let me let me give you another for instance. Um, we we purchased the Icon um, faucet valves to do the jail roughly about a year ago, and I've been waiting on him to get them installed for the last year. He's bought the cutoff valves and the uh, strainer valves to strain the trash before it gets to these valves. Yeah, and um, you know with 
all the projects that, that the county's got going, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dun him on it, you know. Fair enough, but you got over twenty five hundred dollars in uh, travel expense and daily expenses for somebody to come in and install them. So I'm I'm pretty confident we can probably beat that prize with somebody. And else. and I don't I don't care a bit to go try to go local here. We're not that kind of married to it. Right. Okay. Is there any warranty with somebody else installing it? Um, it would just stick to the two year on the valve itself. But, um, you know, again, we've, we've envisioned trying to, as these, you know, the, the faucet valves are rocking on 32 years old now, and we've gone through and put rings in them, I'm aware of three times, and, you know, the movable parts in them are starting to have problems and wearing out. We're in the same scenario with them where you can't find parts for them because they're original valves that come with the building. Um, <coughs> And you know, today's world, there's an easier solution with no movable parts. It just fills the heat of your hand, and then it kicks the water on, in which that's less stuff to tear up. Yeah, my concern is that there's already six out. Mm -hmm. So, like, this needs to get done as soon as possible. So, you would have to get on somebody in town to come, and that's not going to happen. I asked, uh, I asked them when they could have it. It's as soon as you know. They were given the green light, and I was told they would be sitting here in three to five business days. Yeah. So they're sitting in their warehouse. And then for them to install it. Uh, I would have to. We'd have to pull back and talk to some local plumbers and get some. Well, I'm saying the the company who who you have to install it. Like, would it? They be said they would be able to get on it pretty quick. Okay. Well, for Don's reading back of the consent agenda now, exactly what are we? Because he's he's sitting here wondering the same thing I am now. Are we talking shower heads or shower valves yeah. and the no, uh, flush just valves, flush just, valves. Or just the so, just the flush valves. So just what are the flush valves. Two inch length, six inch length cable. I mean, is that stuff you need to make this stuff work, or is it? Yes, on page. Um, yes. So page one, they've got the actual uh, valve itself. Right. Uh, then the controller pod would uh, be the the controller that controls actually four toilets electronically. Touch sensors are the sensors that, that you just bump it with your hand inside the gel to get it to flush. Um, and then, of course, uh, they may have a, the one s six foot length, or I think we may they actually, yeah, the full one uh, solenoid for the nine volt battery, one solenoid for the touch to go between the controller and the touch sensor. But it would only change the unit price to go down from 28 to sure to. Yeah, then, the, then it's also getting it installed, so either saying yes or no to him. Well, that'd be the first thing that Joe could find out. You know, you work on that tomorrow before we before you put in an order. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I don't know, Robin, could we do it, you know, based on what he finds out with that, we do a tentative then on going ahead with this company. And if y'all want, if y'all are okay with ordering, you know, if you want me to start out with 12, if I could go ahead and place the order and have that stuff sitting here so you know well, I'm saying, but in the meantime find out if somebody locally would be able to do it okay, in the so morning the question is also do we want somebody local even if the cost is higher like no so that's no, a, that's no, the no. question that's, I mean, what, that's a question that's also. what joe said at a cheaper price he'd be glad to yeah because that's there what, may I be mean, and uh, so time yeah. in yeah. cheaper so you're looking at two crucial things that are uh, important and we've slowly been preparing for this like I said we've bought the cutoff valves and the strainers uh, to strain the trash before it hits these brand new valves um, Jared has them in stock so I mean we we already need a plumber is uh, what you're saying yeah yeah <laughs> So we've, uh, you know, it's just whatever the, the fire is for the day, whatever needs to be put out first is what we've kind of been doing. And he is, he's, he's, he's pulled in 14. But if you can find that out about a local and then, you know, 
base it on whether or not you can get so I mean you may they may say yeah we can do it but it'll be six months yeah well, we can't wait six months so right. we'd have to go back to the original uh, you know using using whoever they have but we can do it based on you know you may be able to find out something by noon tomorrow and go ahead and do the order based on that and order the 12 mm -hmm. and so we'll let you know so I got a question on this second item there's 14 of those how many actually do you need to make 12 flush valves work so see what I'm saying yeah so we're in a scenario where I've got one. I've got one spot that we can use one in. That'd be one. So do you need three of those? Or I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I need three. Page, yeah. Page one to the, the Nexus. Yeah, it's the Nexus. X eleven point five four flush oh, controller with controller with pots. After you get paid the big bucks, Don. <laughs> like, like doing a, a recipe for three times what you want to make. So we are talking 12 and three of whatever those are right, right now. Okay. And that again, if you know, you find out what you can about using somebody local and if they can't get to it in time, and these people can. I don't see any other any other recourse but to go ahead with, with doing what you have to do there. Okay. And if the eight if the the eight thousand and whatever is based on all twenty eight of them, it may but you travel and all that, it may still change that sum. I mean obviously it would. Yeah. So it would change the eight thousand four hundred and ninety eight, it would bring it down to something, I suppose. Right. Is, is everybody good with that, whatever that is? Yes. The tart line? <laughs> so what we're saying is 12 and what it takes to operate them. That's correct. Yeah. Make it simple. And oh, 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 what are you hiding in the corner? <laughs> it's not citizen participation yet. I'm sorry, Mike. We don't know yet. Things with software, as Microsoft does, is they have this thing called End of Life, and we've got some servers that are main products of our county system, our Dade County file server, our Dade County email server, and one of the servers for Magistrate. I'm trying to remember the fourth one. Uh, but we're under current uh, older servers that we purchased early on in the prior SPLOST with server 2012 and end of life of that support for viruses and any updates ends October of 23 from Microsoft. Um, as a lot of us also known, we have talked about our um, continuity of operations from our COOP training and some of the planning that we've been wanting to do is have our um, this government ready to move if this building or something was gone from tornadoes or fire and a place that we can have redundancy backup sitting somewhere. This also puts two servers with some of these major components at our backup facility that can take a lick in and keep ticking and out of the way and reported with some stuff. Um, Again, we're looking at four servers. Two of them will sit here in this building in our IT area. The other two would sit at backup center. Uh, the Synology um, rack, this is the uh, is the second line item there. This is the um, rack that holds 12 3.84 terabyte hard drives. Um, and we were looking at putting eight hard drives in each Synology rack right now, which would give us right at 61.4 terabytes of data. Now, this is some of the data and getting a little bit bigger than what we currently are. We have been asking some of our big users, um, which is the assessor's office with all the pictures of our partials and data and information they do, our sheriff's office with investigations and things they do. There's a lot of pictures, there's a lot of video, there's a lot of things that has to stay. 
And just that WatchGuard server that we have in some of their fire servers is over 30 terabytes right now. Now that's not included in some of this storage, but for, I'd say there's at least 25 plus or more between those two or equally between them two right now. Um, then we also have the solid state drives I talked about. There'll be 16 of those. Eight of those will be split between each other. Uh, the rail kit, and then here's where we get into the current server, 2022, with 16 core license packs that would go on each one of the servers. And then the server users. Now this is the users within that allows us to have all the email accounts, all the file server accounts from our uh, 197 employees if we have in certain areas that we have. And then SQL Server, which is the last two line items, is some of the things that we need on the magistrate. SQL Server is a piece of software that runs their software that they have to have by the state that we have to house and the CAL users for them between them and I believe magistrate or probate works with that. So we bid this out uh, based with our uh, uh, Networks Incorporated Lightfoot, that is our engineers that me and Daniel met with. Moving forward, we do this health check every year with our system to see where we are. Uh, we are sort of making some changes within our regular IT budget on some more security issues. Uh, we're starting to get that finished up. Uh, Daniel's been working really hard the last couple weeks going one-to-one. -one. We've been cleaning all of our older employees that were here. We're verifying with department heads that they're not there, making sure any emails, but we're having to get some of this stuff off the system for some of the software updates we're doing for security reasons because they charge us per unit when we pay that monthly price and some of the newer stuff we got to do. <coughs> and a lot of this is hinging on our uh, cyber security uh, insurance that's required by ACCG and uh, our things. And we're also having to move towards two-step authentication. If you go to some of your things and log on, they send you a text or an email and they give you a six-digit code. That's part of the steps of our uh, insurance that we have if something does happen. So we bid this out through Lightfoot Technology as them being, a, being able to get the parts as well of our, our, our uh, engineering firm that we work with. And then we also went with Microtronics and I've also had copied this inside section and sent to CDWG and still waiting a price. But the original price from Lightfoot Technology for everything we mentioned was $75,034.10. And then through um, Microtronics was $91,552. What's the monthly, I mean the yearly maintenance on it? What do we got on that? Well, we, that's us doing our own stuff. I mean, it comes with a certain amount of time and effort, at least a couple years on the hardwares and the motherboards and uh, depending on what it is, but we're always, that's why we Lightfoot is on contract with us. We pay them a lump sum about every year and a half or two based out of our IT budget to be on 24-7 call for us. Have to for ourselves in the jail, the 911, and anything. I mean, we wake them up. They're, they're on call just like we are. They're the ones that really help us design and keep us up to date and things that are filtering our email, our untangle box, and our, we're, we've also are looking at We've been slowly replacing some firewalls and switching issues that we're having. And this stuff's running all the time and between all these buildings and uh, even down to the four fields, the shop, uh, the transfer station, and the 4-H building, we, we got everything VP and back in. We're saving that funds that we do on our MyTel phone system that when we done that upgrade and the prior splashed and things when we worked on that and moved to a cheaper rate of phone service. So. This is things, the biggest thing is the servers that are currently on the 2012 of these four that we need to get replaced and then uh, do while we're here doing some upgrade, go ahead and get part of the backup at the center, at the backup center. And one of the things they are suggesting that where you see in these agencies that are hit, that this is an encrypted off network system for the backup. It's not tied to what we call the day GA network. That's all these buildings you see here and the ones I mentioned further away. That's our day GA network every day that we're fighting issues or things. And uh, we've been having to do a lot of work with the DA and the judges here lately as they move offices. We don't ever port in all these walls you see are not plugged up. We don't allow that because people could just stick something in it and go on. We have to jump these things and make them work. So Daniel, myself, and Thomas, which is also in 911, we're, we're the three that's doing all the work. 
when it's needed, and we just you know finished a long upgrade with uh, transfer uh, our transfer station and software, and that's been something that is actually housed on a server here that we can do updates and do the monthly reports and invoicing straight from here now versus having to go down there and sit at the computer and while wow, all those trucks and people are coming in. So, but I know it's a lot. I mean, we're we're here under some time on these uh, 2012s right now. So. We, we uh, you know, I think when we were doing some of the other upgrades that we brought up for 911, that's the same thing. We've been under just some time restraints and how old some of this stuff's getting. Once the end of life is, we don't get any hot patches or fixes. Usually Sunday, Sunday nights or Sunday mornings or Monday mornings early, Daniel's usually up kind of early, and we shut everything down, do the Microsoft updates, restart the computers once a week, the servers. We have to slowly shut that down. That's calling the jail and saying, hey, we're going to be shutting NCIC down, which we they have to monitor 24/7 in the sheriff's office while we reboot and do some upgrades, updates and stuff. It's a constant moving battle that's not seen in the background to keep us up moving every day. This will be a boss. Uh, no, it's, it's under ARPA. ARPA. It could be either one. But I mean, as long as the CDWG, when it comes in, it's not less. I've tried for a couple of weeks to get this, so. And, and in the past, Lightfoot has beat CDWG as well. So in our prior, so we're still waiting on that. Everything will be installed by us uh, here in-house, uh, set up, run up, and then Eric and IT salute, or Lightfoot tech, the engineers will remote in and do some of the final things. Same thing we've done with all the, the current uh, watch guard stuff. We were able to get all that up. We started two weeks ago and Daniel finally got finished up on it uh, after we mounted all the hardware and got it in the system and grounded and we save a lot by doing that all in-house. Yeah, yeah, I assume that you, that would be you guys oh, yeah. transferring the data. The, well, we're not on the watch guard system because we're going to charge us so much to convert from Microsoft to Linux. So we're, we're taking some of that off the network and we will only look at it if we need to and move with thumb drives after the 12 server runs down we'll get it out of the system we don't want nothing to touch our network but really everything we do in-house the only thing they do is help do the final keyboard and stuff of telling where to point and this and that so sure so you are looking at the light foot yes, yes yeah. about 16 for People that might not see it, about sixteen thousand difference in the. Yeah, there's sixteen thousand five hundred thirteen dollar difference in the. And they're case. both chatting there well, Ottawa and. Yeah. Chattanooga. Yeah. Guess Lightfoot's been with us for. I mean, they were Networks Incorporated. Those two companies did compete against each other. They merged, and went, and it's been a little bit harder to find some pricing. But we always hit with CDWG. Like certain things, they're your laptops. They CDWG beat the price on the laptops, and we're they can't. Nobody can touch them on Lenovo's, but when we talk bigger things and they use either HP servers or Microtronics builds everything in-house and about 99% of everything in this county for the last 12 years has been Microtronics. They're, they, when we're ready to replace a workstation, we walk up there and get two or three and come back. We don't have to wait on building them. They're sitting there ready to go. They're right across from Shields Electronics. They're off Jersey, Pike, and, and they're a very <laughs> reputable company. A lot of agencies use them. Uh, College Dale, City of College Dale also uses that company. And then there are several government. They'd also do the work for Walker County um, <coughs> Tax Assessor's Office as well, or Tax Commissioner, just like Angie's group, too. Uh, anybody got any questions? I just want to say that it, it does make a huge difference that you guys do all the. Well, yeah, and that's. I mean, it's it's a tremendous cost. Well, it is, and that's you it, know it we. Truly, truly is. And that's why I said I'm a part of a big team. When when we have issues, we all try to work together, and we do. We are touching a lot of things, but again, that's what we're asked to do. And yeah. We've been, you know, y'all been gracious to do this, and we're still looking at for the funds, and but it's just one of these things that's hit us, and we're we're under the technology issues then when they start ending life when we're in the world and we're we're constantly getting hit there's people still constantly getting hit and when we go around working on these new updates about our emails our two-step authentication we're going to hold some safety classes with each department and it may be in here or going to them so they don't have to lose much work but 
you know, using your government email for personal business don't need to happen because what happens, a lot of people that you give these emails to don't have the security that they need. Uh, they look for .govs, .orgs, or .edus and things like that, and they start hitting us. And I, I could, it's, it's, it's scary how many hits we're taking on our firewire and untangle box right now. It's just ungodly that people are hitting from everywhere trying to get stuff. So, you know, the engineers do a, a huge, but we're able to save that time to do a lot of it ourselves. And Daniel Jones is the main backbone of that. I'm the, I'm the wire puller, uh, installer and do things like that, but he's the brains <coughs> behind that and got a lot of his Cisco and IT certification, him and, uh, Thomas are some of the heads of that, but. Yeah, but we 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 like helping what we can to save us from problems. All right. What do you think, Mr. Hartline? I'm good with it. Larry? Yes, I'm good with it. Mr. Bradford? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman? Well, we had that well, we have much choice, really. If you listen to what he says, <laughs> no, the only thing no, I hope don't. that we get the I hope that we can get as much uh, use out of this system as we've got. Now, don't come up here and take another 15 minutes. Uh, I, hope we, I hope we can give, give enough use. You know, yeah. because things, it seems like the newer they get, even like air conditioners, you know, you well, feel like you get 30 years. Of it. Now you don't get, you know. Sometimes, you know, these things are running around the clock in yeah. five, six years. That's why I say when, when we have splosh come up and we ask us taxpayers and our, yeah. we, we always budget for this in the splosh. We know we're going to replace at least <laughs> half to three quarter of our current system. And a lot of it's driven off this software into live stuff, and it's yeah. it is aggravating, and it's costing us more every year to protect what we got to do with all this stuff, and it, it's just it's out of hand. It's yeah. it's really it's hard. And yeah. it's hard to yeah. look at. I'm fine with it. All right, we'll put that on the consent agenda, and we <laughs> we have one more thing, and that is uh, B. Mm -hmm. I think this is something. Gov West software. Okay. Yes, this is a, 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 a Mr. Don. Yeah, you know, so could, uh, well, Rebecca's right here and Terry's back there, but then Patty couldn't be here, but these are, and then Marcy, could you come up and just, you can pitch it if, if we need you. So come on up. Mar this, these are the folks that were on a, <coughs> yeah, what are you gonna call it to? to look at different software here for uh, short-term rentals and then also our current business license, which is really, what do we call it? I first forgot. The um, occupation. occupation tax. It's really occupation right. taxes. But when you say that, no one knows what you're talking about. We call them business licenses in, in Georgia. Anyway, um, so our current occupational license, tax business license, software is really bare bones when we bought bought it i mean i was really thinking 50 80 business license we have what close to 300 <laughs> and I, that's amazing to me we have 300 businesses and those are the ones we know about all right there's a few you know out there so that is really bigger than what our current software can do and another thing is we are still having to mail out all of our applications and renewals every year instead of taking them over through the internet or email, uh, letting the person get, letting the business owner uh, retrieve that through an email system. And then ultimately they are allowed to uh, renew it online, pay their fee or their occupational tax, and then also print their license at home or at their business, wherever. It's their paper, it saves us time, saves the county energies and resources. And uh, now we'll still be available. If they wanna come in, we'll talk to them and we'll deal with those individuals as we need to, no problem. But a lot of people want to be able to do this from their home or their business. That's the business license side of it. The other side is the short-term rental solution. As we all know, we passed the, occup um, the uh, accommodations tax a few years ago, an excise tax. Since then, the Georgia legislature approved a House bill a couple, three years ago, I guess now, that the short-term rentals fall under that law. 
and they automatically would collect uh, short-term rental companies and they're out, you know, I thought there was VRBO and Airbnb. No, how many are there? There's like 73 out there, mm -hmm. which is actually amazing uh, that actually do these kind of services locally. That's way too much. We can't, we cannot, we don't have the time or the staff to, to monitor 73 companies on a daily basis uh, to see who is using them and who's not using them locally and there so since that law came to effect there's companies that have basically been created right uh, as a result of that and two there's there's about three big ones in the community meaning community of the southeast that we've taken a look at we've been studying this for about 18 months and um, granicus was kind of at the top of the list, but then out of the blue, uh, a company called GovOS uh, sent Patty an email, and she forwarded it to me, so we started to do an investigation on them. He came down, Noah came from Knoxville, Tennessee, came down and spoke to us, did a fabulous job, answered our questions, and but made some notations that we couldn't believe. Uh, currently, we're right around 300, 350 thousand dollars in hotel motel taxes now. You think that sounds awesome? I'm bl blown away by that number because I was thinking it would be about 28 thousand a year or something. I had no idea because we have neither a hotel nor a motel in the unincorporated area, but we have apparently over 300, approximately 321 that we've identified. Uh, short-term rentals and I say short-term rental because they're not all Airbnb they're not all VRBO they're a, a mix of many things and so these companies do a multitude of things uh, one of which monitors online access 24 7 now they'll go out and I think they call it scraping scraping mm -hmm. scraping all right so and they'll scrape the internet for Dade County's uh, borders uh, they call it geocoding and geo something. Y'all can help me out if I'm. Um, anyway, so they take a look at all that information. What was it, Carrie? Twice a day. One of them reported doing it twice a day. One reported doing it twice a week. Right now, we're not doing it at all. It's like we have no way to do it. And so um, we are proposing that we do this and, and that unimaginable information that we got that I mentioned a minute ago was talking about part, pretty much doubling if not tripling based on what we currently <clears throat> they know about that people simply are not paying their fair share they own these they're just not remitting it uh, and most of Airbnb and VRB are being called because they are responsible but it's the other people that are doing it on the day, individual's basis it's just not fair. It's like having a health permit, like you know, this is a restaurant, but somebody over here doesn't have a health permit. Well, it's just not the same thing, or having a general contractor's license. And anyway, so we are looking at doing uh, this. There's an online registration portal that allows us to, uh, the company will provide a 24 7 hotline that will answer not only our questions, but the citizens questions or the owners questions and also if someone is struggling with an owner that maybe every weekend there's five cars parked in their driveway because the next door is a airbnb it gives them a way to report it and the this company will listen to them make reports back to us and then we have the ability to do what we want to with that information i mean we up escalate the sheriff's office or whatever we whatever our ordinance allows us to do so um, our current fee for an annual losses is 25. I was talking to Putnam County this past weekend and they're proposing five thousand dollars per year now that's a huge there's no way I would ever sit here and say that uh, but uh, and that was a commissioner that owned seven short-term rentals that propose that in Putnam County and I was like wow um, I don't even think a thousand dollars I think one hundred dollars is pretty
pretty reasonable. And uh, that $100 actually would pay the fee for this software on an annual basis. Regardless, the income created uh, from that would be uh, more than sufficient to pay for the software. And they proposed, we heard as high as $1.1 million. Now, I don't believe that. I, I really don't. But I do think 800000 is possible based on projections, and that's being conserved with it. So what have I missed? Well, I mean, the reason I'm asking Marcy is because, of course, the Chamber, the, the Alliance for Dade, is our partner that uses some of these resources for tourism. And so, you know, say you right. Well, part of the law was that the hotel motel tax is collected. The eight percent has to be divvied up a particular way, and the, the county keeps a third of it. So there's a benefit to the county if we can increase that number. And part of it comes to the Chamber of Commerce Alliance for Dade, and but has to be used for particular purposes to help maintain our visitor welcome center here in the square, next to Robin's office, and to help promote tourism. And now that we have this money coming in that was, you know, uh, we couldn't believe at first, but we're very grateful for, now we're able to do a whole lot more with helping to promote events in the county. We're developing more brochures and cards that uh, visitors guide, magazine articles, letting people know about what a wonderful place Dade County is, and it's a great place to visit and spend your money uh, while you're here. And I think part of it, too, is just that this helps with the enforcement. I mean, the county doesn't have someone who can go around and knock on doors and say, you know, hey, you're running a, you're, you're renting your cabin out here. Are you, do you have the proper permits and do you have, are you collecting that 8% tax from the people who stay here? And so he says, well, no, I'm not. Well, <laughs> you know, we, we don't have any way of enforcing it. This will help us do it because it'll help us identify those properties that aren't following the law. But now this is not what we don't want to do is we're not going to turn this group loose here and just talking about enforcement. We're not going to turn him loose as no, no, a no, type no. of no. We, we're going well, if we give it if we do this at all, we need to control this place. We're the people that voted with people, see people today. We want to bring some outside group in here. No. I agree. I agree. You know, you need to pay your fair share, but they're not going to hound their people to death. No. No, they, they don't call have, them no, at they, all. And they we, we need to have a control totally over them. And if we want to uh, end this right here, and they start, uh, and we start getting this feedback from these people that's negative, negative, we, we need to be able to cut them off without and a penalty. And that's exactly right. Not, and we brought yeah. that up to them, and yeah. we have a 30 day. We can cut it off within 30 days. Yeah. And they are not contacting the customer at all. That's period. Just, okay. That's we good. already checked. They're letting it's us for know. the co consumer or the owner to contact them if they have a need. And that's from setup of the software to any complaints that they have, or if someone's wanting to gripe about something, they can report it to this number, but they're going to report it to us. They take no action whatsoever, period. This might be. <laughs> this is just a I don't management. know if this is a question but for this or not, but um, I would be interested to know what they consider a short-term rental. It goes exactly by our ordinance, okay. how we've identified that. And right. do we, I don't know that, do we know that? Yeah, they sure. break it down. It's broke out in there. It's a definition, you know, of short-term rental, you know, it's just it's right on the first or second page. It yeah, and gives a definition, you know. It's an property policy, Jordan. It does. It's yeah. basically anything, I just under, haven't read anything it. under 30 days. Under, but under anything 30 over 30 days. is okay. considered a, I mean, it's not short term, I guess. It's I just know. a rental. It's, it's just a rental. Right. I mean, long term rental, okay. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, 30 days yeah. is the. And there's even exceptions for that. Let's say we have a tornado or something and, and you have to rent, your house is gone, and you rent a short term rental or your own insurance or whatever. Well, you don't have to pay the eight percent, but that's that's the ordinance. That has nothing to do with. Well, the, I was just curious yeah. curious about what that was. Local about that. residents do not pay anything. Yeah, yeah. And we're I trying to make that. this so that it has nothing to do with tax base or military. This is self-contained. It's an excise tax. Excise taxes should take care of themselves. 
you know, I mean, that's the purpose behind the excess tax. So. It's not a tax on the owners of the property. Sure. It's a tax that the renters are paying. So it's just passing it through. And they, I mean, how many times do you go on vacation and say, I don't know if I want to pay that tax. So <laughs> I mean, you just pay it and you're happy to go on vacation, I guess. Yeah. So I'm amazed at how many people we have. I mean, how many mm -hmm. short-term rentals we have. Mm -hmm. um, we have, everywhere. they are everywhere. There's 481 listings, but we can only identify truly 321. Uh, 364 include the city. Uh, and so, you know, the city has a few, but no, the city <coughs> has their own method and, and collection. We're, we're not including the cities. It's just it's the unincorporated area. And uh, of course they have a motel too, which helps. But, uh, Two. A two, I'm sorry, you're yeah. right. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at this annual total for this service, 41,000. They had a 7% increase, but we got that down to, if there is an increase, it's 3%. So, and that is um, in for three days. Well, if, there's any, if there's any reason you want to terminate it though in, you can in do three it months, anytime. is this all paid up front or is it? That will be paid quarterly or whatever. Front. But that, again, is not tax money that's coming straightly out of account accommodation. We don't have that information to look at. It's on, it's under B. We don't have nothing. I got B, but nothing's coming. Yeah, B with nothing. Are you signed in? Yeah. Are you on the line? Y'all I have it. <laughs> oh, I've got Ted Brooks reading. I'm looking at it. Can I give you a credit card? I have a copy right here. Are you signed in or are you on the I'm public on. domain? No, I'm on it. I've been on it all night. I got you on it, but are you signed in? Don't have it either. I've done it. You're not logged in. Here you go. I'm not getting on it. I'm not getting logged Because it's a public domain. Anybody can see it. <clears throat> okay. There you go. Just have to Let's not start all over again. <laughs> yeah. Go to the top left and look for login. So this was a this was basically done to make a level playing field with motels and hotels and because people were having to pay that and then the state asked for another five dollars a day if you stay in a motel over here just for that and and people were renting Airbnbs or whatever and they just paying rent and and it's kind of making everybody pay their fair share of a, a rental mm -hmm. right. so. in business. And business license, it gives them an opportunity to be able to pay online. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Online instead of having to Which the state, I mean, the state does that already that oh, way. Yeah, I mean, but online, online. That, so. yeah. But as far as the raising that license fee that we have, we would have to do that through changing order. Yeah, that's an ordinance change. So that's not we'd have to bring that up later. So right now we're dealing just whether or not we're going to want to go with this right. company. Because we can always watch and see what difference it's making in six months. Because I'm amazed at the amount of money that we get as well that you were talking about earlier. I never, I never dreamed it'd be that much. You know, we're a small county, but people still like to come to the country in small counties to spend time, and they don't want a hotel, so they find an Airbnb. I mean, people are doing it all the time. So, so what do you think I don't have a problem with as long as we get, as long as we have full control over the people, and we know. It's not some, you know, yeah. someone said something about policing, some policing force we're bringing in. That's no. not well, true. it would but be. I, but what they, if they do what they say and what this is sounds good, it's fair. I think fair. They're going to they're gonna be able to uh, monitor the internet for any of this solicit right. advertisements and all that, something we can't do. But as far as the police and it, it's like somebody said, you got you yeah. got five people staying here and they got five cars and they're pulled over in my, yeah. on my grass that I take care of and mow. Then you've got a right to ask the sheriff's department or the city police to come well, and you say, you Well, you can call you know, that number 24-7. But they're still not going to do it. You're yeah, still going to have to call them. Not gonna, yeah. we're, not, we're not law enforcement right, uh, anyway. Right. We can't enforce. We're, right. We can make laws, but we, we don't enforce them. That's the sheriff and the police. But that would be something. And I've gone through that. I've gone through somebody thinking, well, I can just park out here on this place and I know we get it all the time on work out, so. So, uh, I doesn't ask the question, but any other questions? What is the price? I ain't got it. 41,140 dollars and 50 cents. That's for both. 
Yeah. That's the business license and short term. Yeah. It's two programs, really. Now, is that based on the 25 On the what? The $25. No, oh. that's not, the 25 is, no. Okay. No, that's just, I mean, if they identify 400 it's yeah. 400 If they identify 200 it's 200 I think that's everything. You have any 41000 where's that going to come from? Hotel motor tax. Hopefully the fee, if we can do the $100, I think it would actually be just, the fee would raise just a little bit over that. I'm like Ted, I'm good with it, but I'd like to watch it for a month or two. I'm all for taking it out of the city, too. Just go ahead and take it out of the city. I mean, take it out of the city. <laughs> he just left. So I think there. I know. That's why yeah. I said it. Ansel's still back there. That's how, that's how that's you get it. volunteers when you leave. Yeah. All right. Mr. Hartline. I'm good with it. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. How say you? Fine. Yep. So all right. Smart. Put that on the consent agenda. All right, we've got a couple more. Uh, we have a couple more things here. Number nine is the uh, resolution R20-23, agreement between a hand up ministry and Dade County for services. Mr. Rex Mayo. Yeah. Or is he just right. here for us? We just want y'all to come up and tell us a little bit who you are, and, and then I think Robin needs some information. Well, I'm Rex Mayo, and uh, we have the opportunity to be able to represent a hand up ministry, which uh, come about in, uh, let me see, 16, I think, is when we were incorporated in the county. And uh, it all came about because we were making some headroads headroads into some people in the jail, uh, a lot of broken people in our jail system. A lot of, I've been working with three generations over there in that jail, and some of you could probably call some of those, but we, we were making some inroads, leading them to Christ, helping them to turn their lives around, and I was met on the outside one day by a man that said, Mr. Rex, is, is there anywhere in Dade County safe that I can go to because I don't, I burn all my bridges and I don't have any safe place to go. And I told him, I said, no, but I patted him and said, I, I will, I'll pray for you. And uh, uh, it just wore me out that somebody had a need and we didn't, and I had no idea how to do it. I really just wanted to find somebody that'd be willing to do it and I was gonna help them. And uh, it, it all came about that I was, became that person to, uh, to be able to do it. So since this time, we've been taking not just inmates and bringing them out of the jail and bringing them into a, uh, a home, a structured environment. Uh, we do take people literally from the street sometimes that are just struggling, don't have a way to be able to, they don't have any kind of support. And uh, we've been able to, uh, to help some people. Our focus is most of the people that we deal with have a drug or alcohol related problem uh, through our Celebrate Recovery that, that we have that's active in the community. Uh, it not only deals with those things, but any kind of hurt, habit, or hang up. And uh, so God has uh, helped us be able to, of course, we, we started off with two homes that somebody just gave us permission to be able to use, and uh, we made moved one woman in one home and one man in the other home, and uh, since that time, we've been able to purchase both of those properties. Actually, one of them was donated to us, and uh, so we have those two properties, another property, and then most of you are aware of where our Hope House Cafe is. That was a nursing home that uh, some unfortunate things came up and it uh, became available. We were able to uh, get that and uh, that's where we house all of our women over there. And uh, we're making a difference. We get up every day and just uh, try to connect with people and uh, try to help them. And uh, I was thinking just sitting here, and I guess being in here and hearing you guys kind of triggered me. One of the goals that we had for our ministry was uh, to take broken people and be able to put the support around them that we could to help them be able to become productive citizens in the community. 
Uh, well, we have people that are not in jail being housed and us feeding them, taking care of, but they work a job in our county, one of our businesses. They rent a home here in Dade County. They buy our groceries at one of our groceries, their groceries at one of our groceries. They have become productive, tax-paying citizens, and uh, we're just... I understand amazed at what has been done. And of course, we can't help everybody. Uh, I wish we could. Those are the ones that keep me up at night sometimes. But uh, we're just thrilled. And it's not just, certainly not me. It's it's a community. This is one of the best communities I've ever been a part of in my life. Caring people that want to come together and be able to help make a difference. And through com community people, through churches, uh, I believe Hand Up is making a difference uh, in our community. I'll hush. I can talk for half a night and you just <laughs> bore you to death. But <coughs> it, it, any questions that you have concerning anything that we do? Uh, are y'all 501c3? Are 501c3, yes. On your property, on the properties that y'all own, do you? Are y'all uh, exempt from property taxes, or y'all pay county property taxes on that? We are exempt on those properties. All but one. We've just purchased one this year. We're yeah. Joe, do you have anything about the, as far as jail <coughs> and recidivism? And so, um, from a jail standpoint, I mean, regardless. Um, there's no community left unscathed when it comes to this drug problem. Um, and on average, um, in a percentage, uh, you, you're looking at a good 75% of what sits in that jail <clears throat> on a constant everyday basis has, has to do with drugs. Um, to sit there and say, um, you know, we don't have the problems that most communities and some counties have, you know, thank the Lord. But, um, you know, to sit there and say, you know, we're um, we're just not willing to deal with it or we're not going to deal with it. Well, your your tax dollars are already dealing with it. Your tax dollars are dealing with it from a jail standpoint. Um, and uh, if you look around <clears throat> at success rates, I mean, you know, on average, the state thinks that uh, – anywhere from a 12 to 14 percent success rate in a drug program or a state-run drug program is is good you know uh is worth bragging over um you know i don't really call that worth bragging for um so far in the last five years what we've seen come out of of uh hand up program has been greater than i don't i mean i don't want to put a percentage on it or say how many of that That'd be up to Rex, but we've seen we've seen a lot more come out of the program. What's gone in and come out? Does everybody does everybody pass the program? No, um, but you know we've been five years in this community. We hand up program has not had any travesties. Uh, you know, big blow up in the in the news media. You know, um, and actually the community um, has pretty much got that there's been enough good come out of the program that the community has rec recognized it in a positive standpoint. Um, and we hadn't really hadn't really had to have a selling point, I guess, or hadn't had to sell it to the community. Um, it's been running long enough that it's making a uh, an impact and a difference um, on a positive standpoint in our community. So um, I think this will go. I, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't think this is going to be 100% finance or, or all funds. I don't think we're y'all are looking at that direction. But, you know, every little bit helps, um, and you know, positive outweighs the negative. And we're dealing with a problem, a lot bigger problem today than we were even three years ago. Um, you know, before your open borders and before this fentanyl blew up. Uh, you know, fentanyl is just about mixed in with almost everything right now. Um, and of course, like the fire department, they left for Narcan class. I mean, our, our jailers, our deputies were buying that stuff. And, you know, primarily it's for the officers because you don't ever know who you're going to come in contact with and it's going to get in the air, you know. So, 
uh, and, and uh, affect the officer or the jail officer. We've had two exposures in the jail, so you know, to sit here and say, well, it's not that big of a problem for Dade County, um, it's just not being discussed in Dade County openly. Um, you know, and, and, and again, like I said, I'm not trying to paint a horrible light um, as to our problem here, but there is other counties that have it a lot worse, but uh, most of the positive that have that happens here is due to hand up ministries and the churches working together in support and hand up and then also the churches um, working independently and separately putting their hands around these people and help them walk this recovery thing out. Rex, um, <clears throat> Rex mentioned Celebrate Recovery. Uh, we started in Celebrate Recovery inside the jail about two years before Celebrate Recovery outside the jail um, became uh, a thing. And, you know, the sheriff, um, it's his, that is one of the things that when he put me in my position, he tasked me with, he said, we got to do something about this. We got to make a difference because, you know, what we're doing is not working. And, you know, just to lock people up for making bad decisions ain't working. You've got to have you got to have something out there and support and some people out there with the right heart to help them walk through it. And, um, you know, five years later, uh, I can, I can honestly tell you that, you know, maybe our problem ain't as bad because, you know, five years ago, a hand up come in effect. So that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. So that this came up, because we, about a year or so ago, started, well, we passed a resolution accepting opiate funds. And opiate funds are uh, as a result of big pharma that was being sued. And Robin can tell you more about all that. But we ended up going with a Tate Law Firm, I believe, and it helped <coughs> us uh, get through that process. And so we've started seeing some funds come in. I think it's around 150,000. Was it about 152? I don't know. And uh, we didn't know. You know, at the time we had no clue. We were told initially, you know, we going to get lots of money. Then when nothing happened, we thought, well, maybe nothing's coming in. But as the courts, the federal courts have ruled, um, initially they were wide scope. You can use the money however you want to use it. And we, okay, we'll take that money. Then they come down and get it funneled way down to basically it's for the care, treatment, <coughs> other programs, and expenditures designed to address the misuse, of abuse of opiate products, treat or mitigate opiate use or related disorders, or mitigate other alleged effects of, including on those injured as a result of the opiate epidemic. That's pretty specific. <laughs> so as of March this year, I had to do a report on how many funds we've spent to the court, the federal court, because the big pharma folks that's funding all of this wanted to see how are the funds being used. And I think really what they want to see is are the funds being misused and outside of the scope of this. And that was probably the intent of it. But I had to report, and I did report zero because we haven't spent any. And as you know, when we take money in the general fund, if we don't use that by the end of the year, it goes into the fund balance. And when it gets in the fund balance, it gets complicated uh, to get back out. So we really need, first of all, to segregate the money into a special account. I mean, we just, we just did. <coughs> that way those funds can't get uh, processed at the end of the year. I thought that's fund. what I thought that's what you did well, up, front, up front that we actually did a. We uh, didn't, but we need to. Yeah, we need to. We, we need really need to keep them yeah. separate. Yeah. And um, but it's settlement. These are settlement funds that's got a specific use, and that's where this came. From. This is how this came about. I, we just have limited resources as to how to use the funds. So. And now, Robert. Yep. So when, when this came to me, I raised um, concerns. I had church-state issues uh, of concerns uh, about this. That we need to be careful when we use the funds. We're not using it for a religious purpose. And there's some very specific rules 
for that. And so, uh, um, this came up, I guess, originally last last month. And so I've done the research, and, and that's kind of what I thought. But uh, as I said today to someone, I, this, these issues don't come up that often for, for governmental entities. And so, but uh, so I had that concern. Today we spoke with, or I spoke with. Uh, Someone from ACCG uh, in their legal counsel office, and uh, uh, they were concerned about that as well. But frankly, their primary concern, as I, as I understood, was having to do with the gratuity clause. And they suggested that we get with someone in ACCG who spent a lot of time on this issue about how the money should be spent and for what purposes, and to the extent that we can. Uh, don't take action on this tonight. And put it off. Who they? Who they? Who they? Uh, they assigned it at, well, like a task force because I didn't know they even. Oh, I know there's got to be someone in there. There's a person, yeah. attorney. Yeah, but it's in their office. It's in the ACC, office. Office. It's it's in the ACC yeah. don't you? She she yeah. sends out the our emails that. Um, Megan was it? Megan Markham, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. Megan Markham. No, yeah. that is in the, yeah. And and so th that was the recommendation. That's what I would suggest that we do if, if we mm -hmm. can wait. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What we need to do? I think we table is. Yeah. <clears throat> we need to find out if we can use that money to pay back some of our Narcan costs and, and our medicine costs and stuff okay. like that. that previous expenses are just saying really uh, okay. Previous and upcoming expenses. Okay. Yeah. 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 Probably upcoming you can, but it probably would have yeah, to be within this. Um, Wenda yeah, we that we started with saving you might be, but I doubt. But I'd say previous. I mean, in the next, yeah. as we start purchasing, as we go, we can. We can, and we checked into that. But the problem, I mean, it's not a problem. It's Narcan has all of a sudden started dropping in price because they've made it over the counter, the the nasal something, yeah. and you can buy up as much as you want, but. If, well, say we use fifty thousand dollars. It's got an expiration date. It's got and then two years. Two years now. Found out before the meeting, but that that is from the time the supplier got it, which yeah. may have had it in a storage for six months or eight so, months. So yeah. you still, we can't use. You know, once it expires, we really can't use it. Right. And because then there's a huge liability. Uh, we could give it away, I guess. Maybe. But here, like, sure about here, that, really. We've been using a lot of it lately, though. Yeah. I'll tell you. Well, how much on yeah. average do we use? It just depends. I mean, we were well, what's the worst? Office again today. We again today is us working on some of this stuff. Uh, Joseph, uh, Tommy, Matt, myself, the uh, tri-state. Uh, what's that group up on 299? Um, Oh, the yeah, the methadone. The methadone. Trust they, they donated some Narcan to the sheriff's office. They signed a card. For it. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, and it expires March of 24. It's just like every drug. It's Nalox is what we carry on the ambulance as well. When these narcotics and drugs are given to us, they got a prescription date. We log it into our checkoff system, and then when it's expired, we pull it off the truck and put fresh back on. And then... I have containers behind two locked doors in 911 where all that stuff is stored and locked and disposed of properly through narcotics. To say how many we use, I can't tell you, but we, the exposures that Joseph has talked about are real. Uh, myself and Ansel, along with two deputies, showed up right over here at the Chevron, the old Exxon, one day during a fire alarm at the elementary, and uh, Deputy Gorey was done push two of them on the gentleman doing CPR and those files right in those nasal connections that they carry are 60, 60 to 64 dollars for two nasal mm -hmm. packs okay. and usually that's two, two for them and two for the officer. Now we've had people that have grabbed them like this and that fentanyl bell on their hands and it's above their gloves and they start getting exposed. Uh, our brothers and sisters in Walker County dealt with some pretty hard stuff yeah. and Three or four of their firemen were exposed pretty heavily during an event, and then the same night, this tw less than 12 hours later, the same drug hit Walker County. I think there was three or four that passed away from that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's it's kind of a new norm for us, I guess. We we really watch what we're doing when somebody's overdosed, and if it's with that, you don't let people touch you. You try to wear long sleeves or hurry up and put something on, and. Um, 
we we have to buy and keep right now every volunteer fire department has uh, five doses that has 10 uh, milligrams in it a piece that they draw up in a vial that was like was given to us today they put this nebulizer thing on the end and they shoot it up the nose by two milliliters at a time but that's the problem is we we got to have enough to replace but we also got to have enough to take care of one or two for the patient and the rest of it's for the first responder so I order all the sheriff, all, all the Narcan for the sheriff's office. I usually typically order twice a year. Um, my order will be 10 to 14 boxes on average twice a year. Um, in addition to that, um, we also I'd order all of the uh, um, fentanyl rated gloves, you know, that the detention officers wear when they're handling, the deputies wear when they're out on the scene dealing with it. and. Um, you know, we we use a decent amount of gloves, and, we, and, and you know we're we're paying a little bit more for the fentanyl rated gloves and the stronger ones. But you know, to have a deputy or fireman or uh, EMS somebody working in ambulance to bust a glove and have exposure, you know, a little bit more is is okay in my opinion for that added insurance that we know is reliable and it works. And um, you know. I, I wasn't prepared to tell you on the gloves. That's fine. Well, Typically on the gloves, I'm I'm just gonna gonna guesstimate. Usually, on average, I'm gonna say about four cases. And when I say cases, there's ten boxes, boxes per case. case. Typically, about four cases per two months. How much per case? What? How much money? I I would I'll be honest with you. I hate I'd hate to quote it right now. And it's, it's so much that every car, every person they touch, they're putting their gloves on there as soon as they get out yeah. of the car. They're pulling the gloves out. Every car, every house they go into, every car they search, anything we do anywhere, everybody's got gloves on. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the time, we're still wearing our mask, just because if you go in that, you don't know where it's at in the house. And tr truthfully, when I get home, I have to strip or I leave my clothes and bag them, take them back to the fire hall and wash them in those machines we bought with the, some of the COVID funds when we were dealing with that to clean our clothes because I don't want it in my house. Is there an expiration or what would it be on the gloves? There is some. Everything on breaks it, down uh, over time. It's two or three years, yeah. I mean, if they're out exposed, but we we get the heavier nitrile gloves that Joseph talking about, they're really thick and yeah. they're a little bit higher on our wrist and stuff because when you're, you know, when you're working on somebody, sometimes they grab you and it's just one of those things. And we. We hurry up and wash now because that, you know that fit now that they use is the stuff that they scrape off those patches that a lot of people wear and it absorbs through your absorption type system. But to answer your question, yes, yes. we can absolutely use money to do that and would. Yeah. I mean, and to answer your question, I just pulled a quote up. It's um, sixty-five dollars a case. With gloves. Mm -hmm. oh. And then just it like, lasts today's price. Right now, this is stuff that's in our. Current the order's fund balance or our general fund that we threw this out of. All right, thank you. So we're looking at tabling this till we can look a little more into it through ACCG uh, legal. Yeah, I see. What we got Did you get the chamber's flush valves up there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we he he went ahead Before while he was we up. On, okay. we, I think he we should go ahead and put that in account though. Yeah, I agree. I'll make a note. Uh, resolution R2223, sale and disposal of county capital equipment and declared surplus property. I think we have a lawnmower. Yes, we have that lawnmower and three, and actually three HVAC units are on there. And uh, so all those will be available on govdeals.com tomorrow. Any questions for that? No, the ones that we took out of the um, ag bill and all the old units that they yeah. had in there, and they're just down in the shop. <laughs> in, the in the way? They're in pieces, kind of. Yeah. All right, then uh, uh, 11, the announcement of the FY24 county maintenance operational budget done. It's just a schedule. Right? Yeah, it's just a schedule, and uh, so budget's going well. We've got, well, we had on here May 1st in, but we have a, we'll have about an, probably another week or so. Most uh, directors, constitutional officers, whoever's over budgets, 
have uh, not made a lot of changes. We suggest we make we give them and provide them a suggested proposed budget, and some have actually come back with less. So that's, Say what? that's the, I know it's unbelievable. I knew you'd fall out of your seat when I said that. But uh, there, so far, most have uh, agreed to that, or it's less. And so we've already shaved about three hundred thousand off the budget, uh, proposed budget. And is the sheriff been in? Still have more shaving. Is the jail been in? Yeah. No. no. Uh, the jail. Okay. Yeah, he's been in. We've talked many times. I thought he might be listening. Hmm. <laughs> We got a couple of line items we got to work Thank on. Thank you, but Joe. Overall, not bad. And uh, so overall, it's going well. We'll probably be hoping to wrap on most of it. Most of it by next Friday. Um, we just have been so busy with everything else. <laughs> and it's hard for all of us to be here at one time. And uh, then June the 8th, uh, we will have a public hearing here in this room at 5 p.m., and that'll be to just review, like we always have to by law, the the date, I mean, the, the amounts, and the uh, we'll have the stakeholders or the directors and officers here to discuss, answer any questions, and then hopefully have something prepared, ready to, for you to consider at a special call meeting on June 15th at 5 p.m. here in this room as well. And then we'll get into the military next month. Then, then the real yeah, I think we had one more addition. That was uh, Lamar's something about the uh, election building uh, just information. The, yeah, I wanted to get in that day because the members are building out there that it's fell through. It's not going to be big enough now. What are you talking about? We said we were going to the election building. Fell through. No, we're working. We're fixing to build a pad next week, huh? Well, that's that's what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm wanting to get. I don't know who started this. <laughs> so anyway, mm -hmm. that's a good way to put out members. Just ask questions here at this meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll get a report on it when we do our when we do my report. I can tell them where we're at on it. You know, I mean, Alex, he's been doing a lot of work on it. We got a preliminary drawing. You know, he's got of the of the actual size of it, and we you know we're on a certain size. We build on that a lot anyway over there. And, and he and uh, Lou on us put, to, put it together and they've got things worked out and you know, they shrunk it down deal. You know, so we, we're going to, weather permitting next week, we're going to be working on that uh, on that pad on getting it done. And then we'll move from there. Uh, hopefully the weather, while well, we got our loaders and all over there, we'll move down on the uh, shelter down there and try to get the, at least the pad itself built. Uh, of course, the pad's always larger than the building because you got you know, you got to control the water. So. No, we've been moving mm -hmm. wide open on it. Not counting, not even counting the railroad up well, there. That's yeah. why we talk about it here in public. Yeah. If we're squelching rumors, we're not shutting down the transfer station either. <laughs> well, that's the that that, that, Well, just, that's, somebody asked me that. Y'all not taking any more? Station, but to recycle. Mm. Since well, that's something. came and made that report in March and said it's costing us, what was it, $65,000, $80,000 a year to recycle cardboard. Right. I've got some saying, why are y'all keep spending money on that? And then others are saying, are y'all going to cut that out? And where are we at? And we said in our response that night that we could report on it in the April meeting, which our April meeting was well, short. We didn't have time. Well, I'll not I'll not go into all this, but you have a Georgia Trend magazine. This happened to be in it. This in the, the headline. Let's end wishful recycling. And it goes on down in red here. And this is Georgia Trend and by their pub editor in chief, not a county. Uh, but it and, and then we'll adjourn this meeting. But why do we all? Why do we? We have all these companies making money from recycling while the cities and counties collecting and sending the materials are losing money. So this, again, if anybody likes to say it's in Georgia Trend magazine, or we'll get you a copy of it because, you know, I'm, I'm for recycling, but that was what we talked about. But it got out we were going to shut down the whole, so I don't know, I guess we'd take, I don't know where we'd take it in, but we're not shutting down. The point is, you said, you know, somebody asked that question. We're not shutting down the transfer station. And, so we're going to keep spending money to... No, we're well, not. We so, may look at not recycling, that, though, but not the tra not taking your garbage. They, they <laughs> thought we were not going to take garbage no, in. This, my, my question is about recycling. Yeah, well, the transfer. Well, the recycling, it, the way... I mean, 
there's lots of ways to go about it. Yes, at one point we, we were probably making a little bit off of it. We were never making a ton off of it. It is a service that we provide to Day County. Um, so it's one of those things, if we decide to take it off, it really needs to be discussed and talked about because that's part of what the people want. Um, so, it, you know, I, I don't know how else to put it other than it is a service. It is our job to make sure that we're doing the best we can to make sure that service is properly being handled. Um, and we're looking at different ways. We've suggested um, to possibly put in uh, for businesses to pay a certain amount to go across the boards, which would help us continue this service, um, the scales. Um, well, I'm going to make Robert Trues of order. Uh, I maybe shouldn't have brought that up, but we this is not on the agenda what we're talking about now. So let's transfer. Yeah. This, this is well, a work session. I know, so but it's still we had to amend the agenda to talk about, and I just squelching rumors. So we're getting into something that was not on our agenda. So it we needs to be. But, but, yeah. Well, we did, but it, it, we weren't talking about it. We could. I guess we could amend the agenda if we want to continue the, the conversation. But. Yeah, he amended the agenda. Um, that's why I responded but to it. But yeah, it was for the... No, it was, no, it was also I for... I did 12 and 13. Yeah. Well, I brought up the, the... What you call it? All right. So you want to continue the conversation? I, I'm not. I'm good with not. <laughs> no. Well, no, but what you're saying is true. It, it is, it is a, like a service we offer, but still, though, you got to draw a line sometime, not yeah. because you cannot, you know, bankrupt whatever. You cannot spend hundreds of thousands of dollars losing, you know, taxpayer money because of a service. You know, and I agree. I mean, we got. But now, if we do this to the, because the majority of this cardboard we're getting and all, they're taking advantage of. A lot of these companies are. They're bringing mm -hmm. in there. That's what we're getting most of it. Right. So we're overwhelmed with it. I mean, it's unbelievable. It? And even wooden pallets and all this stuff here. They're bringing it down there, you know, and, and it's, 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 eating, yeah, and it's eating our lunch. That's down. only my suggestion. Yeah. It's not, Man. you know, it, it's, it's definitely mm. involves mm. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it's budget time, and I've got people like Melissa that are diehard recyclers, and mm. I've got other people where they're saying, mm. what are y'all doing? Well, no, don't, don't get me <laughs> mixed up with that. I'm not. <laughs> not. I am, I am, I am for the service of the people. I, I Mm -hmm. I'm not a super recycler, or I, I'm I'm agreeing that it is a service, and we've got to do our job to make sure that it's properly done, or decide to take it away. We mentioned in an amount, we kind of suggested forty dollars for a recycling, from a commercial standpoint. For commercial only. Mm -hmm. Because there are one or two businesses. That's Definitely big. taking it. I mean, big. They're taking advantage. If we just handle our a residential, I mean, they do their own boxes. You know, we could go with. I mean, we're not going to make money by short no. by far, but no. it would not. We would not be burning no, our wheels off I trying to get rid of this stuff. I stopped and talked to the one in Teptonian. Talked to the operators down there, and they're they're in the same boat everybody else is. That's why this article was in Georgia Trend. It's yeah. not. It's not just Dade County, and I think everybody understands that. China quit when Monica Mosley was in here two or three years ago. She said China has stopped taking, that's where our garbage was going, mm -hmm. but it was so dirty, that's what this goes into. People, plastic is, is recyclable, some of it, but not all of it. Plastic bags gums up the machines if people throw them in something and then put them in there, they tear up and gum up the machines that's trying to get this stuff recycled. So there's a lot more to it than just taking it and getting rid of it. There's what you can take and where the closest thing we could take, probably take plastic, and it's a maybe, is Dalton to Shaw Industries because they do use it in some of their manufacturing. The back end, anyway. Most everything else is Atlanta or below for cardboard or anything else in, in our area mm -hmm. that you would. And that just means you're hauling it further, so you're certainly not going to make a profit on it. It's not for profit, but, but the, the total service of giving people a place to put their trash, their garbage, their old sofa, their mattress, even though they take it on the hill and pay something for it. 
but that's the service we offer. Uh, being able to recycle is beyond that, I think, as far as well, we do take service. oil too, and um, you know those certain things. So it's, it all it all has to be. Uh, well, it's satisfied both sides. I don't. You'll never find mm. it. Yeah, I mean, if you figure out how to do that, well, mm -hmm. put a stop on the commercial without paying for it. Exactly. Right. I agree. I understand. Right. Mm -hmm. With this work session, talking about it in the work session. Yeah, we, we probably need to move on. I, I, I agree. Mm. And, and if, if the chairman wants to uh, appoint a couple of people to give a suggestion, that'd be. I think we will do that. I think we'll just, I'll get a I'll get a committee here and we'll just we'll and we'll give a really a report on it. This next meeting coming up, we'll get serious on it. Yeah, that's what. Right. Yeah, June first. All right, this meeting's adjourned. Let's be back in here 20 minutes after. Everybody take a quick break and be back in because we're running we're running really long. Yeah, last one. Seven o'clock. Tired.